you've graciously asked me to speak about someone who is near and dear to my heart, even though it's someone I've never had the privilege to meet. But it's somebody whose life and legacy really inspires me very deeply. Um, and I have tried in a lot of different ways since I've come to Congress in 2017 to honor him. And of course, I, I'm, I'm speaking about the late and great Alwyn Cash. Um, and I understand Curtis is um, here and you know, I, I just wanted to extend my um, condolences to you and your family, but I'm, I'm grateful that we are able to um, make progress in being able to honor uh, Alwyn. You know, the, as I have learned more and more about Alwyn, um, I discovered all these great um, things about him. You know, he was Central Florida through and through. Uh, he was born in Sanford in 1970, raised in Oviedo, went to Oviedo High School, and then he enlisted in the Army after he graduated. And um, unfortunately, in 2005, he was laid to rest at a cemetery in Sanford. Um, so he started his life in our community and, and returned there. Um, as well. You know, Alwyn was the youngest of nine children, five girls, four boys. And when Alwyn was a young boy, his father had passed away. And his mother worked on an assembly line and later as a custodian at Florida Tech, which, as you all probably know, is now the University of Central Florida. And she passed away um, in 2015. Um, and unfortunately, her youngest child predeceased her. And I think as somebody who is a mom, I can't imagine uh, the pain that that uh, that she must have felt um, with his passing to have your your child pass before you do. But you know, for me, you know, Owen really represents what's best about our community and about our country. Um, you know, we we live in a society where the word hero is used often, and sometimes I think a bit casually. Um, but Owen really is a hero in the purest and most profound sense of that word. Um, and so let me tell you how I, I first came to learn about Alwyn Cash. You know, when you're a member of Congress, one of the nice things you're able to do is um, introduce legislation to name U.S. post offices in your district after distinguished men and women from your community um, who have passed away. And I wanted to name the post office in Oviedo. And so my office began to research um, if there was to see if there was someone in our community deserving of that honor. And during our research, we learned about Alwyn Cash. And I, I confess, you know, like most Amer Americans, I'd never heard of him or what he did before that moment. But as we did our research, what we discovered really took our breath away. And I want to tell you a bit about it now. You know, I've told Alwyn's story so many times, and yet it never fails to fill me with this sense of, like, incredible awe and gratitude. It's a story that, you know, even as somebody who... Um, for whom English is a second language, it, it, it makes the English language feel inadequate in describing the story because, you know, words like courage and bravery really just doesn't do this man justice. So essentially on October 17th of 2005, Alwyn, who by then had earned the rank of Sergeant First Class, he was on a second deployment to Iraq. And while on patrol in, the, in a province north of Baghdad, um, the Bradley fighting vehicle carrying him and other American soldiers and the squad's interpreter struck an improvised explosive device. And this blast instantly killed the interpreter and it ruptured the vehicle's fuel cell. And then flames begin to engulf the vehicle. And initially, Alwyn was only slightly injured, but he was covered in fuel. And despite the fact that he was covered in fuel, he descended into the hull of the um, Bradley vehicle and he extracted the driver who was on fire and he extin extinguished those flames. And at this point, there were still multiple soldiers. He called them his men, still stuck in the vehicle. And one of them managed to open that rear hatch. And so Alwyn rushed to the back of the vehicle and despite the fact that he was covered in fuel, reached into the hot flames and started pulling out his soldiers. And one by one, he pulled them out and his 
fuel-soaked uniform caught fire and the flames spread quickly over his body. And all of this he did under what must have been terrible pain. And he just kept returning to that vehicle to rescue his soldiers. And not only was he on fire himself, he was exposed to enemy gunfire. By the time Alwyn extracted all of his fellow soldiers from the vehicle, his injuries had become the most severe. Um, he had second and third degree burns covering most of his body. And nevertheless, he refused to be evacuated until all of his soldiers were medevaced out before him. And, you know, when he arrived at the U.S. military hospital in Iraq, Alan was still fully conscious. And he tried to fight off the nurses, insisting that they treat the other, other soldiers first. And there were a lot of efforts to try to save his life at hospitals abroad and back um, stateside where, where they had brought him back. But he eventually succumbed to his wounds on November 8th, 2005, um, surrounded by his biological family and his army family. And, you know, in 2005, I was working at the Department of Defense. And I remember um, every morning uh, we would get our intel reports and we would also get um, sit reps basically um, on the situation in the Middle East. Um, and, you know, there would be, um, there would be just numbers uh, alongside people injured in action, missing in action, killed in action. And I, I don't ever remember um, them coming back. It was always the, the incidents of that day. And obviously for Alwyn, he succumbed to his wounds weeks after um, being wounded um, uh, in action and being medevaced out of um, country and out of, uh, out of the war zone. And I'm not sure that those numbers got counted in what we were looking at on a daily basis. And that I feel like is a huge oversight. Um, because we counted him when he was wounded, but I'm not sure that as you know, the folks sitting back in the safety and security of the Pentagon um, making decisions about the war, we ever saw the consequences. And certainly I think um, that knowledge for me is a lot of what motivates me to ensure that his death isn't forgotten by this country. Um, you know, after his passing, he received the Silver Star. You know, that's the third highest combat award that the Arm Army can confer. Um, and it's behind only the Medal of Honor and the Distinguished Service Cross. But based on this incredible story, I filed a bill in January of 2018 to name an Oviedo post office after Owen, and that bill was approved and, and signed into law by the President of the United States. And in May of um, 2019, we were able to hold a really beautiful ceremony on a, a completely beautiful Central Florida day, blue skies, um, nice and warm at the amphitheater in, at Oviedo um, on the park to basically unveil the plaque that now adorns the, the wall of the Allen Crendel Cash Post Office um, on 83 Drive, uh, Geneva Drive in Oviedo. Um, and, you know, the ceremony was attended by Owen's large and loving family, including his older sister, Casanal, um, who my office has become very close to and who's just an incredible woman who loved her little brother so very much. Um, it was also attended by many of Owen's uh, comrades uh, in arms from the Army, um, all of whom revere Owen. Um, one of the soldiers who was there with his family was retired uh, Sergeant Gary Mills, whom uh, Owen had rescued from the vehicle that fateful day. And, you know, he uh, wouldn't have been there but for the heroic acts of Alwyn Cash. There were people who had flown in from Europe um, to be there. It was just an incredibly moving day. But for me, naming a post office just didn't feel like enough. And, um, and 
in, in the course of learning about Allman's story, I also learned that soon after he died, an effort was begun by his family and friends and by his service members and, and veterans had heard of this story to get Alwyn Cash's um, Silver Star upgraded to the Medal of Honor. And I thought it was absolutely appropriate to join this effort and to be helpful. Um, there is no doubt in my mind that Alwyn had earned the Medal of Honor. And as one expert on military awards has said about what Alwyn did, it's the most perfect example of a Medal of Honor I've ever seen. And so in October of 2019, I, I wrote a letter to the Secretary of Defense, uh, Mark Esper, um, and I uh, was joined on the letter by two of my colleagues, Mike Waltz of Florida, not too far from Oviedo, he represents, and, and Dan Crenshaw of Texas, both of whom are Republicans. And we all have national security backgrounds. Um, in fact, um, when I was at the Department of Defense as a national security specialist, I worked with Congressman Waltz, who at the time, uh, you know, he he's an officer in the Army Special Forces, and at the time, I think he was working in the office of the Vice President. So we knew each other from our Pentagon days, um, and now get get a chance to serve together in Congress. And Congressman Crenshaw was an officer in the uh, Navy SEALs. Um, and they had heard Owen's story as well, and so we we joined forces in this effort. Um, what we did in our letter was basically to ask Secretary Esper to review Owen's case, and we expressed our personal view that his actions warranted an upgrade um, to the Medal of Honor. And you know, the process within the Department of Defense for awarding military medals is really regimented and very very closely held, as it should be, and they also want to be resistant um, of any sort of outside pressure, as I totally understand um, the reason for that as well. And we didn't hear back for about 10 months. But on August 24th of 2020, we got a letter from Secretary Esper. And amazingly, he wrote this, quote, after giving the nomination careful consideration, I agree that Sergeant First Class Cash's actions merit uh, award of the Medal of Honor. Um, you know, the Secretary correctly noted that before he could recommend to the president that he award all in the Medal of Honor, Congress needed to enact legislation to waive a federal law that generally requires a Medal of Honor to be awarded within five years of the actions that form the basis of it. So I know this is a lot of bureaucracy, um, but this is just the nature of working with the Pentagon and Congress, apparently. So on September 16th last year, my birthday, um, I filed uh, bipartisan legislation to waive that five-year limit. And it quickly passed the House, it passed the Senate, and was signed into law by the president on December 4th. Um, but now uh, the next complication was, by this point, Secretary Esper was no longer the Secretary of Defense. Um, but we understand from public reporting that his successor, Christopher Miller, um, also recommended that the president award Alwyn the Medal of Honor. And that brings us basically to, to present day. Um, we have a new president and new secretary of defense. And now, and we've had to bring them all up to speed on this incredible person. And now we're just waiting and hoping and expecting that they'll announce that Alwyn Cash has earned the Medal of Honor. And when they do, I think it'll be the culmination of a lot of hard work by a lot of people, but most importantly, it's going to be a fitting and long overdue tribute to a man whose name, Alwyn Cash, um, should be known to every American. Um, 